So sorry, guys. I have I have a problem. With yes, with this we can change. Ah, okay, no problem. If you can change. Okay, we are ready. We are gonna go out, and you are going to start your presentations. Okay. Okay. We are ready? Maybe. <laughs> maybe because we are going to go out right now. Maybe, maybe. maybe. I have a problem. I don't know what happened. But I get unplugged. Okay. Okay. Now we are gonna wait just a little, a uh, few minutes more, just three minutes more and we are gonna go out, okay? Okay. Okay. Now you can finish. What is M-commerce? M-commerce stands for mobile commerce. The term refers to the purchasing and selling of Okay, guys, we are here. I think so that we are ready to see your presentations about M commerce. Okay. So I think so that I just have two groups, then take your time. Okay. Don't be like, uh, uh, don't be like, uh, if you are running with the presentation, I mean, just take your time and read, maybe even explain to it. Okay, and try to everybody participate with. I mean, I want to see some man that's still there. Okay, uh, as I have Carla Arena, she's gonna be the first one with his group. 
Ok. E-commerce. What is e-commerce? E-commerce. E-commerce. E-commerce yeah. is the buying and selling of goods and service through wireless handling device. E-commerce is the process of paying for service using a mobile phone or personal organizer. Use of mobile device to transact, communicate, entertain. Surma? Yes. In 1979, Michael Aldrich invents electronic shopping and makes the first electronic transaction. In 1982, World's first e-commerce company Boston, Boston Computer Exchange is a start. What is mobile commerce? Mobile commerce emerged from the world now electronic commerce and is often referred to as the next generation of e-commerce. The only difference here that in e commerce is applicable exclusively for internet enabled mobile phones, smartphones, or tablets. In other words, mobile commerce is nothing more than shopping using a smartphone. The customer of tomorrow uses his smartphone to shop online. Mobile smart device and mobile internet channel to where we do, we do things uh, how we use it to connect with others. The smartphone has become as inseparable part of our daily life. We use it when we shop online, travel, communicate with friends and families, or for social media platforms. When it customer to mobile commerce, the biggest advantage is that the customer can make his purchase from anywhere and does not have to wait until he has access to a stationary, a stationary PC. As a result, Internet transaction of almost any kind can be carried out anywhere. Books, ticket, travel, music, purchase, games, or clothing are particularly popular. With just one click, the user can quickly easily select and order the desired product. And commerce, mobile shopping. Customers make purchase from a mobile mobile device. Mobile banking, customer conduct financial transaction with a mobile device. Yes. Mobile payment, customer pay for products they buy in person using a mobile device. Mobile commerce trends in 2023. In APP chatbot, social com commerce, argument reality, A e -R, and virtual reality, VR, omni channel marketing, voice commerce, Personalization and artificial intelligence, AI. That's it? Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good. Thank you, Mr. Alejandro Ordoñez. Or oh, Vanessa, I don't know. Okay. Uh, first of all, we need the the concept of the mobile commerce, right? Yeah. Um, is uh, and is like any transaction involving the the transfer of 
own ownerships or right to use goods and service, which is initiated, uh, facilitated, completed by the use of the mobile mobile device. Uh, also now known as, can you put, uh -huh. also known as M commerce is any kind of monetary transaction that occurs through a mobile device. Exactly. Okay, and the word mobile commerce first originated in 1997. To be precise, to be precise, it was coined coined at the launch of the Global Mobile Forum by an American lawyer named Kevin Duffy. When two mobile devices enabled Coca-Cola vending were installed in Finland. The mobile commerce gained speed over the next two decades as more users began conducting transactions from their mobile device and websites involved to provide a better use experience. The payment took place throughout SM text messages. And also we did um a, like a uh storm, what war storm, brainstorm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in our country, the in that time the purchases were limited limited to buying ringtones. If you remember, yeah. uh, packages of text messages or calls, and also like I say to Vanessa, the packages of BlackBerry too. I uh, you remember that. Yeah, yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, guys, as uh, well, thank you for your presentations. Every presentation uh, give us a new vocabulary or give us an extra idea or extra information about the um, commerce that you see as Daniel explain. I mean, it's different from e-commerce. Uh, it's it's par, but it's not e-commerce. And as Christian says that uh, Kevin Duff, I think so, he was he coined he coined the the the, the term. Okay, uh, so and also as they say, I remember that that kind of thing, and commerce that you you can buy like ringtones or like text messages, uh. Even uh, still, I think so that today you can buy stickers, no, or emoticons. So, but I mean, you can sell almost everything by your cell phone. And I don't know, that's the topic. Okay, that was the topic. I think so that also Vanessa and another group, they were discussing about the vocabulary. What is the difference between, between sorry, ubiquity and portability? And that, that was the new vocabulary. Okay, I don't know if you have any question, guys. Hello? No. No, no. thank you, Daniel. No. no, thank you, Zulma. Okay, no. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> I understand <Okay>. all. <laughs> Okay, guys, so they can, you can close your eyes and yes. do your best, students. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Just Samantha cannot go because she, can, she needs help. Okay, but everybody, you can close your eyes and go to your best, students. Oh, bye. Thank you, teacher. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> okay, Samantha. If you want, you can show me the exercise. I mean, if you can share your screen, you can open the platform right now and you can tell me the number of your homework that you cannot do and I can help you right now. Sorry, teacher. I don't understand the first question, but I, I already do my homework. I uh, did. Yeah. Oh. 
I don't know. Do you, so then you don't have any other problem with the exercises? No. Okay. Sorry. No, don't worry. It's about time. Sorry. <laughs> it's about time. I'm working on Saturday. Ah, okay. Sorry. No, don't worry. Okay. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Bye. Good night. Good night. Pragmatics. What is pragmatic? Pragmatics in the study of how people use language, it describes the connection between language and human life. An important feature of language is that the meaning of a sentence is more than a combination of the meaning of the words it contains. To understand fully, we also use information from the situation where the sentence is used. Let's look an example. Kate is about to go out of her house. Kate, now I have lost my keys. Now I haven't. Her, here they are. I mustn't forget my keys. From this, we understand that It's important that Kate takes her keys and she's afraid of a night. She's afraid she might lose she might lose them or forget them because on a previous occasion she has forgotten them. These two ideas do not come from the individual words Kate has spoken. They come from the particular combination of these words with our knowledge of the situation in which they are used. Some words show many different pragmatic effects. Forget is one of these, and here we show several contrasting uses of forget. Languages user, either speaker or writers, continually made choices of made choices of words and phrases, and these choices affect how they are understood. That is pragmatic. That is also types of pragmatic information, pragmatic in, pragmatic in dictionary, spoken discourse. Let's go learn. Um, what is? Let's know. Oh, well, we can learn some different uh, desk or office vocabulary, like post-it, this, this organizer, maybe in-out box, 
cabinet copier. I mean, I don't know. Baseline. Oh, you throw a keyboard. No. Glasses and pattern. Nicely. Mm -hmm. Types of vehicle, transportation, the parts of the car, the horn, speedometer, odometer, choke, oh, fuel gauge, ignition, rear view mirror, temperature gauge, steering, st steering wheel, head, headrest, driver seat, seat belt, emergency, Catch brake, accelerator, passenger seat, driver. Metaphor. What is metaphor? Metaphor is very common in English and other languages. People often think it is a, it is, people often think of it as being a typical feature of poetry and literature. That in fact, many ordinary familiar words and phrases have metaphorical meanings, although we don't usually realize this when we use them. There are over, 40 special boxes in this dictionary that deal with metaphor, and these are listed on the opposite page. Metaphor boxes, achieve, angry, argument, method, mind, busy, mistake, confused, money, conversation, opportunity. What is a metaphor? Look at these three sentences. She flew past me on her bicycle. Turing was the father of the modern computer, Alan Turing. I know who's him. He gave me a call. Look, in all these sentences, the word in bold type is not used in its basic or literal meaning. It is used in a metaphorical way. Why is a metaphor? A metaphor is a type of comparison when you use a word or phrase metaphorically, you are using a meaning that has developed from the literal meaning and has some of the same features. For example, if you say someone flies past on a bicycle or in car, they are not really flying through the air, but the speed of their movement reminds you of a plane or a bird. This is a normal part of the way word meaning develop. And when a word has several different meanings, some of those meanings are usually metaphorical. Why? How do metaphor how do metaphors work? Meta every metaphorical word or phrase contains a key idea. This is the connection or similarity between the literal meaning and the metaphorical meaning. Sometimes the same key idea is expressed in several different words in phrases. For example, when we talk about conversations and discussions, we often use words whose literal meaning are about trips or movements. Let's go back to what you were saying earlier. We eventually arrived at a conclusion. The conversation drifted aimlessly. The key idea in this case is that having a conversation is like traveling from one place to another. I mean, in many of these words we use to describe conversation expressions, this idea, once we understand this case, this key metaphorical idea, it is easier to understand and to remember words and phrases used for talking about conversation. This is why metaphor is important. So a good example of metaphor could be like a coach potato. 
like kaku spotilo that is a very very common saying in english but you are using a metaphor because uh, it is referring to idea that maybe you are not doing anything but it's not talking about literally a coach I mean, a potato on the couch. You cannot imagine like a potato resting on the couch, first of all, because a potato doesn't have, it's not a, a life, a, a life, a, a thing with life. So it means that somebody you use or tell you that you are a coach potato. I mean, you are not going to be a, a potato on the couch in that moment, I mean, because it's a metaphor. I mean, some sayings and some other things, they are metaphors that we use in every language. Even in Spanish, we have different metaphors. I mean, that we use really, really, it's, I mean, maybe the point is that just the people who write uh, commonly like poetry and different kind of books like novels or something like that, they know how to use it and they can explain. But it doesn't mean that the other people don't use them. The point is that we use commonly, but we don't know uh, what it's the real meaning sometimes of the words. And maybe we use commonly. We don't know uh, that we are using it because it's a common, it's like... Um, it's not like a standard language, it's like colloquial language, okay? So I think so that the video is gonna be in two parts. That is a metaphor. If you can make a research in about, it will be good.